hello and welcome back and that is right today i want to do another big face off of four of the most popular ssds right now for ps5 upgrades that's right there's been a lot of different drives arriving on the market i should know i've reviewed pretty much all of them now but it has to be said that despite all these other ssds arriving some of which with really unique selling points these four still continue to be the most popular in the market for upgrades for reasons of durability for reasons of price for reasons of value for, for reasons of performance either way all four of these these SSDs have their own thing to sing about. This is the Seagate Fire CUDA released in summer 2021. This is the Samsung 980 Pro originally released in autumn 2020, but this is the heatsink version that was released at the end of 2021. This is the WD Black SN850 released autumn winter in 2020. This device also has a heatsink on board. And finally, the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus that was released at the end of 2020 or the beginning of 2021, depending on where you are in the world. And all four of these have been updated to their latest firmware, and all four of these are going to be tested in this PS5. We're going to be utilizing this system with the covers on and the SSDs with that cover plate on top of them. All of them is going to be in the same deployment situation, but there will be differences. One of the biggest differences between them, of course, is that the Fire Cuda, the Samsung 980, and the WD Black have all got heat sinks. They're all using their proprietary first party heat sinks inside there. Now, for the Sabrent, there are two kinds of Sabrent heat sink. There is the chunky heat sink that we've talked about before, but we're not going to utilize that because then we can't use the M2 cover plate on top and it may skew the results. Um, and we're not going to be utilizing their PS5 designed heat sink either, because once again, that I think is too much of an advantage to utilize something like that, which really will skew the numbers between all of them. No, we're going to be utilizing, as always, the Elatang heatsink. So the Sabrent there is going to be utilizing the $10 heatsink there on top of it, and all of the others are going to use their proprietary heatsink. So we're going to be looking at a myriad of games that we've tested already. Loads of PS5 exclusives, as well as a bunch of PS4 titles that are quite complex and do throw curveballs. So Throughout this test, we're looking at which one loads the games first. Remember that we are looking at them all loading the games, some in some cases from the title screen, in some cases from within the game's world or very specific game options. Another thing, when these do load up, we will be looking at frame analysis to see which ones loaded the games first. And again, all of this has already been detailed on an article that should be linked in the description over at NAS Compare. So we've already gone through those results one by one. With these, what we're looking at is which one loaded into the game first. So we are talking right the way down to the hundredth of a second which one did it. In some cases, the SSDs loaded the game at the exact same frame. And we'd have to break it down to tens, if not hundreds of thousands of a second to be able to see. So in those cases, if an SSD, if two SSDs or more load the game at exactly the same frame, we give them the same point. We're not doing any half points here. And ultimately at the end, we'll count up which SSD scored points and ultimately decide which one wins our latest face-off. But that's enough of that. Let's make our way straight into the tests. Okay, so as the title suggested, our first test was loading from the title screen into Spider-Man Miles Morales, and it loaded so fast I didn't even finish that sentence. I think the Samsung 980 Pro was the fastest loading there, but our next test will be loading the game from a fast travel point. Exactly the same idea, but this time within the in-game world. Let's have a look, and it looks like the Samsung 980 Pro took that one as well, perhaps with the Seagate Fire Cuda very closely behind. Again, we will be looking at multiple games on multiple PS4 or PS5 versions throughout the test. Now this one was a slow loading game. This is one that uses a lot of those IOPS performance numbers using LEGO Worlds. And again, look at the percentage figure for each SSD. We want to see which SSD hits 100% first. And even looking at this immediately, this is going to be a close run thing. We're going to do frame by frame analysis at the end of the video. And we're linked to that all in the description uh, linked article at NAS Compares. But again, we're looking at which one hits 100 first. And it looks like the WD Black closely followed by the Seagate 
took first place there. Again, as it proceeds forward and as a ship lands on the planet within the game environment, the open world segment we're going for here, it has to be said that, and again, we can kind of see that clear difference. These are all randomly generated terrains there within LEGO Worlds. I will add, before we go on to the next game as well, that during the frame-by-frame -frame analysis, again, the images should be in the article linked in the description, you've also got the option within these tests that we're going to be looking at if a game loads within half a frame of another SSD, two SSDs together, they both get the point. Let's go for our next game shortly. And death loop, a nice quick PS5 loading title here. We're going for straight into the in-game world from the title screen, first one to load. And to me, that looked like the WD Black, closely followed by the Sprint, took the point. We'll have to check by the end when we do the frame-by-frame -frame analysis. And again, during that frame-by-frame -frame analysis, it's worth highlighting again that we can go down to 100, uh, I think a, a thousandth of a second, and hopefully that will be enough to compare these SSDs. Now this really was a tricky one, as you can already see there on screen, the initial loading segment goes completely out of whack during all of these tests. Now a big part of that is because this is a game that has an online component, whether you like it or not. We're doing an on uh, an offline mode here, or attempted offline with AI bots, but still nonetheless it has to connect with the server throughout, and that caused unforeseen delays, as you can see there on screen. Now we counted loading when we have full control of the character. So that's the X button being spammed um, to the point where you're actually given the ability to jump out of the plane. So we didn't count loading because of things like silent loading and uh, uh, differential loading. We wanted to make sure it was only when the character had control because that was when we deemed that the full game had assets loaded in. And again, it's the first person to be able to jump out of the plane. And again, frame by frame analysis, we judged it when the character's hands were visible, not just when the camera started changing position throughout. So again, let's see which one's going to have it. It's a slow old loading game there as it loads in the ground assets for this as we go in. But let's have a look. And yes, it looked to me like the Seagate Fire Cooler took it closely with the uh, Samsung 980 Pro just behind it. So again, we included this game because it's so popular and people do play this on the PS5 Gen, but still, it's still a PS4 tile. Let's move over to something a little juicier. Spider-Man Remastered, now the PS5 upscaled version, and blink and you'll miss it. I think that might be our first three or potentially four-way tie. I think the Rocket got there first, maybe, followed by the Samsung, or at least at the same second. That's one for the frame-by-frame -frame analysis. And now we're looking at the same in-world loading as quick as we can. It should be less than a couple of seconds. And I think the Sabrent comfortably took that load there at the bottom right of the screen. Again, frame by frame analysis should tell us a lot more. But again, let's move on to our next game. using legends mode in ghost of cinema we can see right now loading into it what we're doing right now is going in with the silent background asset loading here so this is going to be one of the early examples of when you can see how games load in things differently in different instances because even though these are four different ssds you can immediately see different animations different characters on screen and some where the characters are absent but we counted when the game loaded in controllable character combat as you can see though very close in between all of them again that might have been another point for the Sprint at the same time as that as the Samsung 980 Pro 
But again, some solid testing there. Let's try another instance of this game for testing. Again, a much more open area this time in the same mode included in this game. I apologise for the rather disjointed recording here of the audio. I'm watching this at the same time as you are, and I'm keeping in the extra bit of gameplay there to show that the games are still running fine with no silent background stuff. But as we load into the world there, we can see a lot of similarities there, slight differences there in some of the textures. There's definitely a difference in the speed at which some areas are loading. Uh, with this one, we counted full game loading. Look at the armor differences there. We, we considered full game loading to be completed when the camera dips in and we can control our character. And we can see there between the four SSDs, ah, oh, that must be near enough identical. That's gonna be incredibly hard to tell the difference there between these four instances. It's gonna be a very tight mix there, maybe even a two or three way tie. Let's carry on. Next up was Rocket League loading into the game and if you listen carefully you can hear my cat trying to knock the microphone over. Let's give that a slight miss there but again that looked like a solid easy win there for me for the Sabrent rocket overall. Again all of this is detailed in the description. Do look at the frame by frame analysis there but we will go through at the end of the video. Next game. Any of you guys ever had a cat? Seriously, having a cat who does not want you to record on your laptop? Fun times. But nonetheless, this is our second to last test here. This is using The Last of Us Part 2. In The Last of Us Part 2, it's a PS4 title with an enormous loading time. But this is where some of these results I had to question. Uh, because this is, by the way, uh, just uh, no spoilers, but of course, massive spoilers. The Samsung 980 Pro definitely wins this. But the difference being when a Samsung 980 Pro won this, it won it by an almost comically large degree, as you're going to see in a moment. You can see all of them are loading at the same speed now, but the Samsung 980 Pro loads this game in more than a minute faster than everyone else. Now, the Samsung 980 Pro is a great SSD, but it's not that great. As you can see, it's loaded in there. And the difference is, I believe, after looking at this in post-analysis, is because when I was doing my testing, I retested one of these in my early provisioning, and the game had already loaded in some of the assets in the background. Now, I revisited this subject um, vaguely when I was doing my Samsung 980 Pro later testing in Test 5. And the Samsung 980 Pro still loaded quicker than the other three SSDs. So, I didn't warrant re-editing all of this. But, still nonetheless, it, I kept this in because it proved how the game did hold in a lot of those assets a lot of the time, even if you went back to the title screen, went into um, a hi a hibernation mode, and a lot of that data was carried over and kept in the cache there. But still, nonetheless, as you can see, in the case of the other three, they've just loaded in. It took them longer, but they got there in the end. Next up, we're going to do one final test with Last of Us Part 2. Now, I'm pleased to say things are a great deal more even in this test. Immediately there, it looked like all of three, um, the three on the right, the Seagate, Sabrent, and Samsung loaded in a millisecond before the WD Black there. Now, let's see how that pans out, the final, because this is an open world area here, the studio part of the game, and we were loading in just to see which of these SSDs obviously loaded in the whole game first, because this is an area where you have full control immediately and none of the closed camera uh, kind of silent loading of the previous test area we were looking at there. Um, again, this is our final testing throughout this. Um, I've already kind of taken all of the screen grabs already and put them in an article below before doing this voiceover. So I already know who wins this. But this is the first time I got to properly see them side by side on screen, uh, not just the uh, point second analysis that I've already done. Um, but still, it's really interesting to see how these four SSDs of similar architecture 
Um, despite their wildly different price tags, different controllers, and different brand attitudes have resulted in these SSDs and how they perform. And again, if there's a big takeaway from this video, I want you guys to take all four of these SSDs are still great PS5 SSD upgrades. And in some cases, the difference between one and another, although it might be 50 or 100 pounds in game loading, sometimes it's been a thousandth of a second difference. Again, very dependent on the type of game and type of loading. But as we conclude now, and the games will finally load in, and again, it's a slow one, we can see that I think that might even be a three or two way tie there. Again, I'll have to remember, because again, it's been a while since I edited a lot of the frame by frame analysis, but the WD Black was not the fastest one there. I think if it was any of these four SSDs, maybe I would say it was the Samsung or the Sabrent that got their fastest, but again, that is such a small frame of difference, it's tiny and hard to see. And what we're gonna do now is we can see there all of that frame by frame analysis. You can see different ones such as the bottom right with the Seagate and the Sabrent apparently uh, loaded in at the same frame of second there as far as Last of Us Part Two. And all of these are available in that link I've talked about in the description in the NAS Compare article broken down. But for now, I think what we should do is look at all of these results. And as you can see there on screen, the Seagate Fire CUDA scored five, the Samsung 980 Pro scored five, the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus scored four, and the WD Black scored three. Now, you can see there where I put the T, the little uh, under undercase T, that is because some of these were a flat out tie. And you can see the number of times the Seagate, Sabrent, and Samsung tied together. The WD Black, on the other hand there, had a couple of very clear wins there overall. But for me, looking at these and knowing out of the four of these SSDs that the most uh, affordable of all of these, right now, at least at the start of 2022, is indeed the Sabrent and the WD Black, and the Seagate and the Samsung being the most expensive. Even though they're the most expensive, they've definitely done the best in this testing. And in our range of tests that we've done before, these have kind of indicated and played out exactly how we thought they might have. The WD Black is a great SSD and do not think it having a three here makes it a bad SSD. That is not the takeaway from this video. These are the four most popular SSDs for PS5 upgrades in 2022. And right now, when we look at how they've all performed side by side, even if one is better than another of these four, these four still outperform the majority of SSDs available in the market. Anyway, let's wrap this video up. This is me and my cat trying to knock the microphone over. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, chuck me a like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. And of course, uh, visit the link in the description to NAS Compares, where a lot of the breakdown of everything we talked about today, including the frame-by-frame -frame analysis, is available. I'll see you next time.